Well, welcome back to Tea Time. That's right. It is evening tea time, and I have an incredible guest in the house. She was on in season one. That's right, and we're already season five, so five years later, and she's back again. So I have Amy Hutton in the house, and we're going to be doing uh, Teach, Empower, Authentic Awareness Tea tonight. So if you want to know more about that tea, stay tuned for that. Uh, but before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, and we're going to get you to ring that little doorbell. Uh, and you can watch these tea times at any time in the morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you feel like watching them. And you can also watch these replays over and over again, whatever tea time resonates with you. Also, if you see Miss Liz's tea times on any podcast apps, give that a follow, give that a subscribe and, and check that out as well. So you can hear the audio, uh, parts of Miss Liz and all her incredible guests. So what does Miss Liz offer you? Well, I offer you over 300 plus interviews with guests from around the globe uh, for the last five seasons with all topics and all walks of life. So you're able to enjoy something. I guarantee there's something for someone out there. So now let's get started with the disclaimer and some bio, and then we're going to get Amy in here and we're going to spill tea together and have some fun and catch up and see where she's been in the last five years. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show, Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you feel that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at our later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless it's a surprise, special, or rescheduled tea time, which is done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, who is my guest? Well, Amy Hutton is hailing from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Amy has 20 plus years experience in the field of working with youth and dealing with bullying and abuse. In elementary school, she was severely teased and bullied between grade three and eight, including being physically assaulted in grade seven by a group of older girls in the girls' locker room. In high school, a teacher used, used his power, position, and authority to exclude and tear her down instead of supporting and lifting her up. To succeed as past leadership has as past leadership has failed her throughout her school years she has now turned her experience and attention to helping educators as a youth diversity advisor and international speaker facilitator amy is now the in the process of designing a corporate training for educators called the four pillars for fa facilitating safe spaces for young female students in school. Amy also provides workshops and talks to juniors and senior high school students on the importance of flattering the curve of bullying. Amy sits on the board of National Networks for Mental Health Alliance, representing the province of Alberta, and is a member of the Gender and Sexual, Sexual Diversity Advisory Board with the Calgary Police State Services. Let me get Amy in here. And you know what? I think I got a little bit of the old bio in there. So let's see if we got anything new that isn't in that bio. 
<laughs> Welcome, Amy. Hi. I think I got the old bio, right? I think you had a bit of the old bio in there. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's still true what I do, yet things have morphed and changed and shifted. So, right? Yeah. I was, when I was reading that, I was like, hmm, I there's something that I'm missing here. <laughs> It's all good. I'm happy to be here again. Hello. Hello. So, Amy, for the viewers in C that didn't see you or, or heard your tea time in season one, share a little bit about who you were as a little girl and who you are now. I know there was a little bit in the bio, but share a little bit of it. Yeah. So, growing up, I, you know, was sort of shy uh, because I had some learning challenges. Um, you know, never officially diagnosed in the 80s, because at that time, in the school system in Ontario, um, kids weren't coded, kids weren't really given as much support as they are now. Um, I had to repeat grade three, the teachers actually wanted to put me into what we may remember or recall as the like special education class. And my parents were like, No, hold her back instead and give her some extra support and homework and, and things like that. However, that's where the bullying started. And I was called names, every name that you could think of and then add, you know, 10 more to it. Um, names like stupid, ugly, dumb, retarded, and a loser. And, you know, those words, like I wore them like a coat and that's what I thought I was, how I was like, thinking and being. Um, yes, as I said in my bio, I was physically assaulted in grade seven by a group of girls in grade eight in the locker room um, because I developed faster because I was actually age-wise was the same age as grade seven, grade eight and girls. Um, a girl came up behind me and grabbed me by my bra strap, flung me around the room and I went flying into a locker. And, you know, battered and bruised, I didn't know who I could trust, didn't know who I could talk to. And when the teacher finally came in, she just looked at me red in the face and I couldn't say anything. I didn't, because I didn't know who did it. Um, got through that, graduated grade eight, moved on into high school and high school was a little bit better. I still have my challenges yet, you know, there was the swim team and the band and uh, towards the end of my high school year, there was also, I was um, on the field hockey team and the dragon boat team, actually the first one ever. And, uh, I was in my grade 13 um, biology class or OAC biology as a grade 12 student actually. And I remember, you know, noticing on day two of class that I was already having some problems and I was looking for help. So I went to the teacher and um, he said to me, he's like, yeah, I'll help you. Uh, you're left-handed though. And you'll never pass my class. Wow. So somehow I got through it. I remember the last um, subject in the biology course was about actually anatomy and physiology of the human body. And because I was a lifeguard and doing first aid and studying in there, I knew these answers and I was answering them correctly. And, uh, the teacher again, like he stopped the class and he looked at me and he's like, where did you come from? And I didn't know what to say because I'm like, I didn't want to talk back to the teacher. He's the head of the science department. So I just sat there and I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, sir, I've been sitting here this entire time and you just haven't seen me. Wow. So luckily that mark was uh, a passing mark, yet not in my top six um, OEC credits because when you and I were going to high school, you know, we had grade 13, we had our OECs and those were the ones that took us into university and the universities only looked at the top six marks. So luckily biology was my seventh mark. So that got to be dropped and on into university I went. So that's a bit about me from when I was young. And so, uh, so Amy, I want to get into why you came back after five years. Like <laughs> there's so there's been a lot that has happened in the five years since we last talked. Uh, so yeah. Amy, share a little bit what has happened in five years. Uh, a lot has happened in the, in five years. Um, the biggest thing, and I know we'll get, we'll probably dive more into the, this topic in general, yet what happened is in 2018, so I think I had already, was about to be on your show, we were talking about being on your show, 
in 2018, I was having these really weird dreams and I didn't know what they were all about. And I was talking to a friend of mine at the time who was a shaman and studied in dream work and shadow work. And she said to me, Amy, I don't take this the wrong way, yet are you attracted to men and women? And it was a hard stop. No, I can't be. I'm not allowed to be. She's yeah. like, okay, I'll, I'll like sit you, you know, like you sit with that and, you know, let me know if you want to talk kind of thing after, right? So it, you know, I went to my favorite tree and by the river here in Calgary, one of the rivers, and I sat down, you know, hand on heart, hand on belly. And I was like, okay, you know, looking up at the heavens, who was I attracted to growing up? And then I got quiet. And one by one, these names fell on onto my journal because I brought my journal and pen with me. Um, this girl in elementary school, that girl in high school, that girl, I woman I worked with in university and a couple of women here in Calgary. And I put the pen down and I cried. And okay, well, maybe I am. Maybe I'm attracted to women and men at that point. So it took a lot of internal work. I actually had what is known as internal homophobia. So I was okay. afraid of myself. I was afraid of myself. I felt like an alien inside my own body because I've dated men before. One who was even abusive. Like I've been, you know, I dated men. So this was a really big shock. And in 2019, I was um, in a course about overcoming fear virtually uh, through the computer. Uh, side note, that's how I met one of your former, another former guest of yours, Frankie. She was in this course with me. And I just blurted out, I'm like, I'm attracted to women and I haven't told my parents yet. And the class stopped. And uh, the coach, wonderful woman, um, Marlo or Romy Ellis is her name. And from the Uncommon Woman. And she's like, okay, Amy, you're fine. You're safe. We got you. You're not living your authentic self because you are helping girls at that point. Girls live their brave self and you're not. So there is a disconnect. When are you going to tell your parents? And I remember that gut punch of, I can't, that this is not, I, I'm, I, I can't tell my parents. And um, the reason being, as I look back, you know, zoom out and look back on that time of my life, you know, there was a time where um, I was attracted to the, the show Baywatch was on and I wasn't attracted to David Hasselhoff or Pamela Anderson for that matter, but there was a couple other women characters or actresses on the show that I was, yet I didn't know what to do with it all. I just kind of sat with it quiet, right? And then, you know, mom and dad would make comments about all oh, the boys and I was wearing flannel uh, shirt and Doc Martin hiking boots. And, you know, they asked me one time about, you know, do you want to, Amy, do you want to tell us something? I'm like, no, like, no. The other caveat, the other thing to this, thinking back on my life growing up, um, it was in university and I had come home from university and it was still in the time of the internet and email where if you had, um, you had a family email address and if you wanted to write to the person, you put their name in the subject line, right? Yeah. So I got home from university. I'm like, oh, let's just check and see, you know, what's going on. I saw my name in the subject line. So I clicked it and it wasn't to me it was about me oh yeah my sister had written to a mutual friend of ours who had just come out as gay and his you know Aaron my sister wrote to this mutual friend and said we think Amy's gay what do you think can you tell like do you know so our mutual friend wrote back and said uh I can't tell I don't know the main question is, if she is, can you still love her? And the answer I read back was no. So I don't know if that no was just from my sister or as the family as a whole. So back to 2019, when my coach was like, you need to tell your parents. That's why I had that knee-jerk reaction of I can't. I, I, I was afraid to. So... What uh, Rami did was she helped everybody in the class. Um, you know, if you have to tell somebody uh, a truth that's really scary for you to tell and you're really fearful, here's how you write the letter. Here's what you say. And I wrote word for word what she said. 
and I created an email. I actually started with two of my cousins through that I wrote to them through Facebook, then my sister through email, and then my parents. And when I wrote to my sister, it was the same email the, or message, you know, Facebook, like the same thing. In my sister's email, I did say, though, that I 100% respect and, and acknowledge that if you don't want me to see my nephews anymore, I have to be okay with that. Because that could have been a possibility. My sister wrote back and said, my views have changed. Still love you. You can see your nephews and go tell mom and dad already. So I know the next night wrote the email sitting here at my desk and it was 10 p.m. here in Calgary, midnight in Ontario. And I hit send on that letter and I cried myself to sleep because I felt so nauseous and so emotional. Woke up the next morning, checked my email on my phone of that because of 2019, you know, checked my phone. Um, Mom and dad had read the email and responded. And I cried again and had more feelings of nauseousness. And I read the letter, her response, mom's response back. And they said, um, you know, we still love you. That must have been a hard thing to do. We'll still, you know, we'll accept you. Um, and at the very bottom, she wrote, we thought something was going on and you would tell us when you were ready. And I guess you're ready. Well, that's, so, that's a good thing, though, Amy, right? Because yeah. your parents were accepting, they, they accepted it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I bet you that was the biggest fear, too, because you were like, oh, my God, they're going to reject me. They're going to turn away from me, abandon yeah. me. Yeah. Like, there's so much fear, right, when you're coming out. Um, yeah. And you were in your 40s when you came out. I was in my 40s. I'm turning 48 next month. So, you know, not that long ago. And I also, I you know, want to pause too and acknowledge and very much realize and know that there's a lot of family members when a person comes out of the rainbow closet, that they're not accepted by family. Yeah. And they're kicked out of the house or, you know, things like that. Um, so yeah, so once I told my parents in 2019, I'm like, okay, internet, social media is fair game. And I came out online and uh, started dating, and that was an interesting experience. Went on a, a coffee chat date with this one woman that she's like, well, how do you feel about sex? I was like, uh, well, I kind of skirted that question because I have never had, at that point, never had sex with a woman. And so I didn't really know how to answer. Also in 2020, I worked with my coach one more time, one-to-one, uh, -one, so privately. Yeah. And she said through the computer screen, um, it was during COVID and she was in Thunder Bay and I was here in Calgary. Uh, she's like, Amy, are you just attracted to women only? And I started crying. She's like, uh-huh. She's very intuitive. Yeah. So she's like, you know, tell me, tell me that, tell me again. And she had me, like I started off as a squeak whisper and then grew and grew until I was able to say, you know, hi, my name is Amy and I'm a lesbian yeah. without batting an eye. And then in 2021, I met um, my now wife and we both took a risk because I had never dated a woman and my partner, she um, had obviously been dating women before and she was on a, a big break because she hadn't dated in a long time. And uh, we both took a risk and, you know, it's now happily ever after and um, it's great. And we see each other on weekends just because of our, our living situations. She um, lives in a different part of the city with her mom supporting, helping her mom. And I live here in my, my apartment. And uh, yeah, it's great. Well, I, I, Amy, I think that's really <laughs> cool. You know, I think that's cool that you brought that up because, you know, relationships doesn't always have to be living in the same home, you know? Yeah. And I bet you that actually helps your relationship as well because you have that distance, right? So when you see each other, you 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 enjoy each other yeah. instead of having somebody all the time around, right? And then you're yeah. just like, oh, like what are we gonna do today? What are you doing tomorrow? What are <laughs> you know? But then when there's that space, and space is good for yeah. a relationship, you know, because it gives gives you that independence as well. Yeah, yeah. Like we would like to like find a place together and you know have a a condo apartment or something together. Yeah, it's just right now it's not the right time and we acknowledge that and we we do still though we do as i said we do want to move in together um, yeah. just not right now so 
So yeah. in saying, in saying those words, Amy, coming out of the rainbow closet, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel uh, happy. Uh, it makes me feel um, a little giddy. Like I've been, I, I, I'm excited how happy I am. Like it's been interesting. Um, and, and friends have noticed, they're like, Amy, you're so much happier. <laughs> like you're so much happier now. Um, although I will say too, that, um, you know, the way that, the way the climate is here in, in Calgary and Alberta, it's not sometimes the greatest in the world because of what the government wants to do. So, yeah. you know, we do have fear still in 2024. Um, you know, I've been called, I've, I, it was 2020 and I was wearing a mask because that's when we, when we were wearing masks and going to a store and there was a, a, a Jesus, I call him Jesus freak man, like somebody <laughs> on the corner spouting his thoughts about the Bible and religion and things like that. And he looked at me across the street and I was getting my mask on to get ready to go into the store. And my mask is black and it has a rainbow heart and it says pride 2020 on it. And he looked at me across the street or crossing the street and, you know, walk right by him to go into the store. And he pointed at me and he's like, you're going to go burn in hell. So this is what a lot of people in the LGBT community deal with on the daily. And there's some people in the province that, you know, want schools to change and don't want the teachers to teach everything about gender and things like that in schools at the appropriate age at the appropriate time. Um, and so that's why it's, you know, a little fearful to be walking down the street holding my partner's hand, even though we really want to. Yeah. I, and, I call those people that are Bible thumpers or whatever hecklers, right? Yeah, they they're they're heckling, but they don't believe in the word themselves because you're not to, not to judge another, right? Like yeah, you know, like we're all human beings, and 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 I I have all walks of life on tea time, like you know, yeah, and it just because it's not my lifestyle doesn't mean that I can't have a friend that that's their lifestyle, right? Yeah, uh, and have that open conversation like we're having, you yeah. know, heart to heart instead of judging. Where yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm interested in understanding how it felt to come out to your family, how how it felt to come out to the community, and yeah. like you're you're sharing these stories of you know, like you don't you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel safe, and it's sad because we're all human beings and we all should have a right to love who we want to love, right? Yeah, for sure. I, uh, you know, and I got involved um, as you said uh, in my bio. Um, I have been sitting on the Gender and Sexual Diversity Advisory Board with the Calgary Police Service as a volunteer civilian. Um, I just received my four-year anniversary certificate of, of volunteering. Uh, I also have been volunteering with a place called Calgary Outlink, and they provide workshops and seminar, uh, well, workshops and then like meetups. So there's one that I facilitate called Grab a Java. And okay. it's, it's hosted at a local coffee shop close to actually where I live here. And it's a open invitation for people who are part of the LGBT community um, over the age of 18 to come and grab a coffee and just meet other people and have conversations and just have connection, which is really fun. It's really cool. I meet so many different people. There's a few people that come yeah, like, yes, every month. And then there's a few that, fly in fly out like you know come and go and and all that stuff so it's really great i um like one of my values is the gift of service so you know volunteering serving um is something i really enjoy to do and, and we talked about this uh, you know open conversations just having conversations especially with the youths right because you work yeah. a lot with youths just having yeah. that open conversation. It's not trying to make anybody have their own beliefs or anything. It's just having a conversation heart to heart. How do you feel? It, it's just like your therapist, like, you know, like yeah. ask those questions. And then, you, you know, it, it makes you want to think and, and understand, is there a reason yeah. why I'm feeling this way? You yeah. know, 
Yeah, and that's why I privately coach youth as as a coach. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not you know social worker therapist. I'm a coach. So I help the youth figure out what's going on in their brain and their all the stresses that are going on when they're a person is 12 years old and 13 and whatnot. And then, okay, well, now let's add, maybe they're questioning their, their sexual orientation or maybe they're questioning their gender identity. Okay, let's have a conversation about that. And a lot of kids, if there's parents out there listening, a lot of kids in that age, age group, 11 to 14, don't always want to talk to mom and dad. Exactly. I did. I know I did it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was so, just like, I like you're trying to figure out yourself. You're in your teen hormones, right? You're just like, Oh, okay. I like this, but I, no, I don't like that one. Oh, you know, it's even like if you're, if you like a guy and you know, there's one guy that you're like, Ooh, and then the next one you're like, Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how it is with women too. Like, you know, yeah. having that connection with girls and saying, Oh, I don't know about that girl, but oh, I went out to check her out. Like, you know, like yeah, it's normal. It, it is and, yeah. and I think we're we're in society today where people are making it abnormal to be normal. Yeah, you know, there's too much focus on well, you have to feel this way and you have to be this way, and you have to have to have to have. We're not saying have to, we're saying figure out what's going on with you, yeah. you know. And having yeah. that conversation, and that's what I really like about you, Amy. You know, when we had our first conversation in season one, too, was we can have this conversation. We can debate, you know, and still have a friendship. Like, you know, it's not like, oh, well, you know, eh, go away. Like, you know, that's not the way life works, guys. Um, true. I am going to put a in brackets. <laughs> like, I am going to say, though. <laughs> Like, you know, if there's a person, and I unfortunately have had to do this recently, um, if a person, social media, if a person is posting something that is not true and they're blatantly believing it or thinking it's like fact, um, if they're putting down, uh, well, through the computer screen, putting down, yeah. um, you know, people of the LGBT community or, or things like that, I have... A unfriended, B blocked them. Because so I'm like, I I can't. Like I'm I'm choosing not can't. I'm choosing not to. Yep. I'm not having that in my life, in my sphere. Um, you know, when the Olympics were on, there was the whole curve. Oh, the opening, the opening ceremony. Okay, a the opening ceremonies, B the oh, where is she from? She was a boxer. And people were thinking she's male when in oh, fact yes. she's, she's was she female. From Russia? No, it was somewhere over Eastern Europe or East Africa, somewhere. One of the countries that bans being part of the LGBT community. And people were saying she's a man, she's trans, she's, you know, this, that, this. When in reality, she is female living with a hormone hormonal imbalance yeah that she produces too much testosterone and it's a growth thing and it's a muscle thing that she lives with um and because of that situation i actually took a mini break from social media because i was getting bombarded with hate yeah so i'm like you know what everyone see you in 72 hours yeah and well, I, sometimes I, it's nice to just take that stuff back, Amy, because yeah. social media, it is, it's tug of war in the last couple of years. It's really yeah. been, it, it, you get on and there's so much division, so much hate, so much, uh, you know, if you're not in part of this, you're not part of that. And it's like, whoa, like yeah. stop the horse. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, so yeah. take a break. And, and and I and I highly recommend that to anybody out there. Like if social media is a little bit too much for you at, at one point, just take a break. It's mm -hmm. gonna be there when you come back. <laughs> yep, it is. It is gonna be there. So. So, so Amy, for all my younger listeners out there, and mm -hmm. if they're trying to figure themselves out in that, what message would you have for them? Uh it's a message that I've been saying since almost day one of me being in 
like being in business, which is a while ago, um, is be brave, be bold, and be yourself. Be brave to stand on your own two feet. Be brave to say, this is who I am. Be brave and say, no, that's not right. Be bold enough to say, that's not right. Here's something we can do about it. Be bold enough to say, excuse me, teacher in science, I do need help. And can you help me with this? Be bold enough to say, I'm struggling with figuring out who I am at my core. Who can I, who can help me be bold enough to say, even I'm having, you know, thoughts of, of self-harm. Who can I talk to? Be yourself, be you and be the best you that you can be in that moment. It may look like you're staying example, you're staying home and you're reading a book or you're playing a game or you're listening to music. It may be being yourself and volunteering. I actually talk to youth a lot about that, at how can you be a happy helper? How can you give back? How can you, as a family, as a school, as a class, uh, give back? I did that with um, a school here in Alberta, here in Calgary, last summer or last spring, I guess, just before they got out. Um, and I talked about being a happy helper and different ways to do that. And then I didn't hear back for them, but hopefully they're getting things in gear to maybe do something as a school or at least a class to give back, um, like doing backpacks for kids or, you know, some sort of fundraiser, some sort of something to give back and volunteer. I think volunteering is deeply important because it's the heart, right? You're working with the heart yeah. because you're not getting, you're not getting paid for it and you're, you're not getting a, an award or a ribbon. Sometimes you do for the, for those services, but you're actually doing it because it's out, out of the goodness of your heart. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm a big believer in volunteering and you meet people, you socialize, you connect, you have those conversations, yeah. you know, and you might volunteer at one location and then six months later you might volunteer at another location and you might pair up with that same person again. You yeah. just never know, right? Yeah. And things about youth too, this is just coming to mind. Um, there was a, a moment in time, just it was around COVID somewhere in there that I took a few courses uh, hosted by the Center for Suicide Prevention here in Calgary. Um, Actually, I think they're more, they're also Canada wide as well. So they do other things, not just in Alberta. And I took the um, prevention course for youth and suicide. And the, one of the things I remember from there is that youth, two things, youth choose their safe person to talk to. And if you're lucky enough to be that safe person that they talk to, your role is to guide them to safety. So if a, if a teacher, if a student says to a, te a teacher that they've been self-harming, your thing is to A, thank them, tell them that thank you for trusting me, thank you for sharing that with me. As a teacher, because of rules and protocols, who can I go to? I need to tell somebody else that you trust, hopefully in your family, who can I go to to get help for me to help you? Because, because they are a, a youth, that, that step does need to be done. Um, and other statistics about, I don't have them on top of my head right now yet, a lot of youth who are a part of the LGBT community, and then if you narrow that down even more to the youth who are part of the transgender community or the non-binary community, they're rate of attempting to die by suicide is higher than a straight cisgender youth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's the reason for that, Amy? Parents not believing they can't feel they don't feel safe. They don't know who they can trust. They the maybe the parent has said, okay, go live somewhere else. Um, you know, different reasons. And it has a lot to do with, um, you know, that self, that wanting to be okay and they don't feel like it and they don't know how to stop the pain or stop the hurt. And they 
they choose to self-harm because it maybe gives them a bit of a relief. Um, yeah, so it's it's a hard subject, yet that is reality with the youth today. Yeah. And specifically more the kids who are questioning and curious and just figuring themselves out. So this whole piece, thinking back to the Alberta government, the Saskatchewan government and New Brunswick government, who want to put these barriers in place for kids to be themselves and trust their teachers is very, very damaging. Do you want to share why, Amy? Because if a teacher, for example, here in Alberta, one of the new rules that's probably going to be, pa be passed, I think, in October, November, is that if a child under the like grade eight, grade seven and lower, if they come out to the teacher and they want to use a different name or a different pronoun, the teacher has to phone the parent and let them know. If the parent at home does not agree with their child now choosing to be called you know, Johnny instead of Sally and using he, him pronouns instead of she, her, use your imagination what could happen at home. Yeah. So this, these new laws that are coming into place are so damaging and hurtful for our youth. Well, it's actually putting them in more danger as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sorry I'm, to go I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> that we're getting this out there, Amy, because, you know, there's all walks of life listens this tea time. And, you know, I want you all to feel safe no matter who you are, you know, where you come from, feel safe in who you are as an individual, because I think it's deeply important that we start accepting everybody for who they are, you yeah. know, uh, I, it goes into your tea as well because you bring teaching and uh, empowerment and authentic uh, awareness and it brings it into the tea, right? Because we're teaching the empowerment that to be yourself, to be yes. bold, to be brave, right? Yeah. So tell me why you gave me those four words. And I love <laughs> that you gave me four words. <laughs> teaching, uh, yet that is just something that I feel we need more of. And which ties into, yeah, the empowerment teaching about empowerment teaching about self-acceptance. That is my keynote that I do give, that I do provide to schools, junior, senior, high students is self-acceptance is my superpower and being okay with that. Yeah. And then, you know, the awareness and the um, authenticity of being authentically yourself. Yeah, there's days where I really don't want to be me out like out loud like you know big whatever yet I choose to be because that's who I am and I cannot not be myself yeah. and awareness and awareness actually links in with education um, because thinking of other topics I've spoken about dating violence or domestic violence and especially to kids and youth and stuff is you know education and awareness is needed in all school levels to learn about all these different things um, because if you're not learning it from school and you're not learning it from home, where are you learning it? Social media yeah. and your peers who may not have all the right answers. So, you know, for example, what's coming into mind is say a youth does trust their parents, does come out to their parents as, hey, mom and dad, I'm gay. Or, hey, mom and dad, I feel I'm born in the wrong body and I want to transition. First of all, Youth who are transitioning, it is a long process. It's not an overnight thing of, yeah, okay, we'll do the surgery. Here's like medications and okay, we'll dress you different and use your, no. <laughs> it's, it's a long process. They meet with a plethora of doctors and psychologists and psychiatrists and family counseling and, you know, counselors. And they have different meetings and they start really slow. Okay, well, maybe let's just use your preferred name at home. And let's look at, um, for example, someone who is a transgender boy, let's look at getting you uh, binders, they're called. And they're, it's like a tube top that's very tight that you wear on your chest that pushes your breasts in. Like it's a binder. So it, okay, it's so it tightens it up, right? It tightens it up. 
OK, so let's do that. Um, let's go to the library. Let's go to an organization, for example, here in Calgary. Let's go. Let's do some research. Let's go find Skipping Stone and go ask them for support and education and awareness and step by step. And then, you know, with the doctors, um, they also look at the hormones and say, OK, yes, we can put your your child on puberty blockers or hormone blockers that, you know, say two, three, four years down the road, if the child's like, no, mom and dad, no, I, I am how I was born. And can I stop the hormone blockers? Absolutely. Yes. And everything and everything's okay. That's a, that's a one myth too, that people don't really know. It's like, no, you can stop hormone blockers and they will stop and things like that. Um, so if the, if the child comes out to the parent, you know, Hey, mom and dad, I'm gay. Thank you for trusting me. I love you. Do you have any questions? Or, hey, let's go to the library. Let's, you know, look for some things that do some research. Parents also may be in shock, and that is perfectly okay and perfectly valid. And, you know, you may have to say to your child, mommy or daddy, you know, me, a parent, I need a day or two to digest this. And I think that's sort of what was the case with my family, especially because I came out in my 40s. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you just told me I need to sit with this. Well, it's and, a lot to process, right? It's, yeah. It's not something that just, oh, a high five, like, way to go. You know, yeah. there might be some parents out there like that. But I yeah. mean, it is a process, right? Yeah. It, it, there's a trans, tra transitioning time for even the parents and yeah. the family members and friends, yeah. uh, especially with transgender, because if they grew up as a boy and they turn into a girl, you, you, you know, it's a lot of transitioning for everybody involved. Yeah. And I find that there's not enough education out there. There's not enough services out there to make people understand that this is what is best for them, not yeah. best for what's for everybody else, but what's best for them. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, it's a long process for youth, even for adults as well. Um, I think when I first came on uh, your tea time, I think I might've been talking about the book that I compiled. Yes. Uh, the, the Inch by Inch Growing in Life book. Yes. And one of my authors in the book, who is unfortunately no longer with us, um, she passed away. Uh, she is, was two spirit. And that is the indigenous word for trans, in a way, the indigenous word for transgender. Oh. So yeah, two spirit, that's where the two S comes from in the LGBTQ two S plus, or some people write it two uh, S LGBTQ plus. If you don't know what all those, those letters mean, two S is two spirit. L is lesbian, G is gay, B is bisexual, L, G, B, I, T is transgender, and Q is queer or questioning. Now, recently, I learned something about the, the, language, the, the order of the letters. So 2S, a lot of the time, is now put at the front because the Indigenous people were here before me. Like, I'm a settler and the indigenous people were here before I was. And then the other piece I've learned is before the AIDS crisis in 1980, it was GLBT, oh. or sometimes just GLB. GLB, yeah, GLB. Then the AIDS crisis hit. And a lot of the women, lesbian women, looked after the gay men because the hospitals wouldn't, their family wouldn't. So the lesbian women did. And to honor that, they switched it around. And now it's L before the G. Well, I'm, I'm learning so much tonight. And, and I, I, I appreciate you sharing that because for all the listeners out there, you know, I've always wondered about the letters. I'm just like, like what letter? Why are they picking these letters? You know, uh, yeah. so getting educated, having a conversation, <laughs> understanding, <laughs> you, yeah. you know. It all leads back to T, guys, teaching educational awareness that we can all make yeah. a difference when we start understanding and getting people that live it to speak yes. it. Yes. That is one of my biggest pet peeves is somebody speaking on something they have not lived. 
it causes more damage than good. Yeah. 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 When we go, when we talk, when you and I talk after we're done our show, I have a one suggestion for sure of a, a gentleman who might be interested in being on your show. Um, he has an interesting story. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is I want people that come on tea time to share their stories, right? Mm -hmm. what are what they went through i might have similar similarities in the stories with abuse grief mental health but i'm not leaving that person's story right and that's what it is is to open the mind and have some understanding on why people have different lives different ways of living different beliefs different morals that doesn't mean that we cannot be friends you know uh and the thing is is bringing people together having open conversations and sharing you know, teaching, like you said, we need more teaching, uh, yep. you know, and the empowerment. I asked you this question when you were on the last time. I remember asking you this. When you hear <laughs> the word empowerment, what do you think, Amy? Uh, I think of, I don't know if it's the same as before, but what's coming up today is uh, just empowerment and the self-belief and that self-empowerment, that self-acceptance, um, being myself and feeling strong in, you know, my, my mental, my spiritual, my emotional and physical body to, to be okay, to be myself. And, and, and I think it was close to what you said the first time, but, <laughs> you know, but it's been five years guys. Like, yeah, you know, a lot <laughs> has changed in five years. We've yeah. all changed in five years. I, I know I'm not the same person I was five years ago. Uh, so Amy, I want to get into the colors because I asked you what your favorite color was mm -hmm. and you said purple and rainbow. So let's go yes. with purple first and then let's go with the rainbow. Why purple? Um, I've liked it for a long time. Um, growing up and still to this day, my mom's favorite color is purple. Um, I like, I, I just like all things purple. I like the color. Um, a funny story about my mom when I was little was she actually had purple suede Nikes. And uh, yeah, so it was kind of fun. That's she and not the blue purple. suede shoes. She had the purple suede. She had purple. <laughs> purple Nikes. Yep. That is cool. See, and that's that's probably why you're connected to the purple is because it reminds you of, of memories. And, and oh, yeah. Yeah. Now she still wears purple today. Like go through the, her closet, it's probably lots of purple. So let's get into the rainbow. What's <laughs> what's with the rainbow? Uh, I just I just like all the colors of the rainbow. Like, I don't have them in front of me, but people can do a Google search. Um, they're, the rainbow, the pride flag is a rainbow, right? right? And all the different colors mean different things in that rainbow. And um, example, like, I'm pretty sure red is love. I forget what orange is, yellow is sunshine, green is nature, um, purple is, or the violet is um, like the universe and I think like spiritual type thing. And, you know, the other colors also mean different things and different symbols of the pride flag. Um, I just love, like my closet hardly has any black and brown in it. Oh, well, look at it's that. It's mostly color. I have the odd like black and white top or maybe something with some brown, yet mostly it's all color. Well, the color is good. I like color. I like uh, bright colors on clothes, right? Because it yeah. makes you feel good. Uh, you know, if you want to look, I think black is like sophisticated, like an office kind of business style, you know, kind of locked up kind of thing. Yeah. But then you can wear a nice black dress and look good too. But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the time and place for everything. Right. So Amy, I want to get into you do speaking as well. So let's get that out there. So how have you been doing with speaking? Because you've spoke at uh, Bridget's events a few times, right? Mm -hmm. I've spoken at the Women Talk events, uh, multiple locations. Um, I, I just love one part of part of my speaking that ties into ed education and teaching or empowerment and teaching and awareness is I've developed a whole new talk more for organizations and corporate even that it's called queer 101 
and it's why is the queer community who they are what like who we are what does our pride flag mean what do all the symbols mean what do all the alphabet the rainbow alphabet what does that all mean um i also talk about safer spaces and empowering spaces at work um, i share a story about a situation i went through at a workplace that wasn't all that hot and great um, i share about why it's important to and how to do things and i show a few video clips of history of three movies that are here filmed in canada that people can watch for free on youtube to learn about the history of the LGBT community in Canada. One of them actually, well, the first one is called um, Sex, Sin, and 69. And that's about the history of the LGBT community. The second one is The Fruit Machine. And that's about the 1980s-ish purge that was happening in the police and in the military at the time that was happening. Yes, people were pulled out of their offices, sequestered in a room, driven to a, like a shack and t interrogated about who are you with? Who are you seeing? Who are you married to? Are you really married to that person? Like all these things. And then they would just fire them. Wow. And it's called the fruit machine. Calgary just had a presentation here about that and had two people that were actually a part of the movie and a part of the purge be come and share their story in the library. Um, and then the third movie I share is all about the AIDS crisis and it's called Undetectable. And it's one of my friends is actually featured in the movie because he lives with HIV AIDS and is now undetectable because of the medications that he's now on. Wow. So it, those are three really good movies that people can watch on YouTube for free. And uh, yeah, I talk about that. I talk about, um, I can do talks to schools like post-secondary that need those continuing education credits because I go into, you know, documentation. How do you do, how do you do your documentation? How do you do different things within your practicums or in an office, um, especially in the medical field, like sonographers, ultrasound, um, diagnostic uh, workers. I forget all the terms yet, yeah, you know, diagnostic centers and things like that. So, so Amy, do you go into the schools and still talk about bullying prevention? Oh yes, I do that too. I want, I want, I want to wrap it up with bullying prevention because there's so much of it going on. And school just started, right? Mm -hmm. And we're right back at base one again. You know, yep. it seems like as soon as school starts in the new season, we're right back where we were when we finished up at the, at the end of the year, right? I know, yeah. And people, I remember during COVID because a lot of the, all the a lot of the schools were homeschooling or, you know, virtual calling classes and things like that. I remember a teacher or someone saying to me, I bet the teachers are happy that everybody's at home because the bullying isn't happening. I'm like, my eyes went, pardon? Bullying yeah. still happens. It's now just through the computer screen and on their phones. That whole world of cyberbullying that, you know, luckily I didn't have to experience. I could yeah. go home and shut my door at the end of the day. Yet the kids today, it, it's constant. It does not turn off. So yes, yeah. I speak about like self-acceptance is my superpower is the keynote. And I pretty much share my bullying story in different grade levels, like different times of my life in the in different grades. And yeah, it's all about being yourself and accepting yourself of who you are and being kind. Yeah. Because bullying is a big pandemic, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, everybody talked about COVID being a pandemic. I think bullying is a pandemic because a lot of people hide behind a screen and they think that they can just be anybody they want. They can be a God. They could, you, you know, I, I, I have the power I can type and yeah. their words, it doesn't matter. Right. But words do matter and words hurt. And, yeah. you know, and we, the prevention of our children, especially getting, uh, being aware of what our children are, are watching online. Mm -hmm. where they're joining groups they're joining clubs they are joining you know get get engaged and ask them questions at a like at supper time have a conversation and say like oh, what what group you're into there like you know i think yeah. that open conversation needs to really come back you know like the sunday dinners where the family all came together and everybody asked like how was your how was your day like you know yeah uh, yeah 
I had a thought on that. Um, I saw it somewhere that the worst question you can ask your child when they come home from school is, how was your day? Oh, because you will get fine or no answer. So you just mentioned open conversation. It's yep. okay. Who did you help today at school? What did you learn today? What was your favorite, you know, subject? Like get, get more answers out of them and then you'll hear about how their day really went. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because it is true, right? They want to shut us down right away, especially if they're teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, what do you care? Like, I'm going to my room, right? And I'm going, yeah. like, yeah, all the hormones are there, right? Yeah. Uh, so, Amy, did you write any new books since last being on Tea Time? Um, I don't believe so. I might have been a part of a couple uh, collaboration. I am very slowly working on my own memoir. Um I need to get back at that and keep writing. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've had any new books since since that. I forget, to be honest. So, yeah. So the memoir that you're working on, is it about your story coming out of the rainbow closet? From day zero to current. So um, it's everything, my whole story. Because it's like lots of people. It's multi-layered and has lots of parts to it. So on the website, amyhutton.ca, um, there is a blog and that's where I was putting my stories and those blogs is the plan is those blogs turn into the book. So if people want to go to the website, amyhem.ca, there's a link a tab for the blog and you can read what I've written so far. There is a big gap because I haven't done it in a while yet. You can read about what happened so far. And so, Amy, I want to ask about that symbol that's behind you, because that's what we, we connected with was the inch by inch empowerment. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would like to know more about inch by inch empowerment, can they find that on your website as well? Or? They can. Yeah. Uh, if they go to amyhunton.ca, I talk about inch by inch empowerment. That is my business name. Um, unfortunately, right now, my website is broken. So amyhutton.ca is, is what I'm using. Um, yet you can learn all about Inch by Inch Empowerment, and my story is there as well, part of it. Uh, well, most of it. And uh, yeah, the symbol behind, uh, it's actually a trefoil. And because I was very much involved in Girl Guides as a girl growing up. And, I remember that. Yeah, and so that's a very important symbol to me. And then I believe in the center, it's, I, it's hard to see in this video screen right now yet, I believe in the center is a purple butterfly because it's that transformation, it's that morphing, it's it's things like that, so. Yeah, when you said Girl Guides, I remember that. I remember us talking about Girl Guides. Yeah. So are you still a part of the Girl Guides? No, I'm not. Um, I've thought about it here and there, uh, going as an adult, like, uh, adult member. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Call, have me back in five more years and we'll see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, bring all, I'll bring all my guests from season one back in five years uh, uh, and see where you all are and so Amy what final message do you have for everybody out there today uh, it's the message I've been sharing pretty much throughout actually sprinkled in and we've talked about it already is be brave be bold and be yourself well I, I really appreciated this conversation and I even got some uh, some facts and some education as well during this time <laughs> Uh, you know, and through conversation, I got to know a little bit more and understanding as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for anybody that would like to know more about uh, the LGBT. Q. Q. Almost. Q2S plus. Yes. QT. Uh, if they would like to know more, they can reach out to you, Amy, through oh, your sure. website and yep. through LinkedIn, I believe you said, right? Yes, through LinkedIn. Yep, for sure. So, and you also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So, but you would prefer them to reach out to you on LinkedIn, right? Uh, LinkedIn for pro like professional, like people looking for speakers, people looking for workshops, things like that. If their parents listening, they can, yes, please go find Inch by Inch Empowerment on Facebook. Um, pretty sure it's set up that I can receive messages and you just pop me a quick note. I do offer free, like a 30 minute consultation to talk about your child and to see if we'd be a good fit of me helping them in my coaching program. Uh, that is private one-on-one -on -one for three, six, or nine months in length. 
different packages, different, you know, levels of engagement. So it's, but it's all on the website of amyhutton.ca. Awesome. And Amy, thank you so much for wrapping up my September of 2024. That's right. September is all done, guys. Uh, the press release for October's lineup went out yesterday. So check out there's 13 incredible guests that are coming and a lot of returning guests because my guests just like coming back and serving more tea. Uh, we do have a special event going on with two double couples that are coming in and they're going to be talking about relationships and intimacy. So you'll want to check that out. That's in mid October. Uh, we also have a hostage uh, survivor that will be wow. coming in and sharing his story. And we have a girl who rode a bicycle from Canada to Mexico with a brain tumor. So she'll be sharing her wow. story. So we have a lot of incredible stories coming to the table. Uh, and if you want to have yourself on Tea Time or you have a, a subject that you would like Miss Liz to get out there, please reach out to me at my website at www.misslizesteatime.com or check out Miss Liz on all social media platforms. Until then, we will see you. October 3rd and we'll start October, but we're wrapping up September. So thank you again, Amy, for sharing thank your you. tea and being here. And thank you to all the listeners and uh, supporters tonight, you know, your questions and comments. Thank you so much for those. Uh, Miss Liz could not do this without you. So until next Thursday, same time, same place, we'll do this all over again and serve you two new TEAs next Thursday. Thank you and have a good night. Bye.